Hello! So today I'm going to help you memorize the secondary hemostasis, mainly the coagulation cascade and the diseases that are involved in it. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth. This is just going to be like a quick breeze if you want to really understand coagulation. This is not the video for you, but if you want to memorize for the ASCP or like an exam, this should help you, okay? Um, and let's start! So first of all, we want to memorize the coagulation pathway factors. It's easy to memorize the common pathway, which is the factor 10, 5, 2, and 1. Because they can also stand for $10, $5, $2, and a dollar. They can stand as money denominations, and so it's easy to memorize them, okay? So that's the common pathway. Common pathway. Okay, and then we will branch out. Okay, so let's go to the extrinsic side first. Extrinsic pathway involves factor seven and tissue factor. Tissue factor. That's factor three. That's also known as factor three. So this the extrinsic pathway. affects the common pathway okay and then if there's anything wrong with the extrinsic pathway is what I'm saying if there's anything wrong with the extrinsic pathway it will affect the common pathway as well okay because they're all connected now let's go to the other side which is the intrinsic pathway the intrinsic pathway has a a lot more factors to it than the extrinsic okay so the easier way to memorize this is so you wrote this 10 5 2 1 already and then you wrote 7 for the extrinsic pathway what's next to 7 it's 8 9 so where do you put them they're in the intrinsic pathway so you got 8 9 and then 10 is already here so what's next to 10 is 11 and 12 and then at the end you also write H M W K and calicrine they're involved in the intrinsic pathway calicrine okay so now you have the coagulation cascade that was pretty straightforward And so we have the intrinsic pathway. So now you have your complete coagulation cascade. You have the extrinsic pathway, the common pathway, which I forgot to label. And you have the intrinsic pathway, which has all these other factors. So now it's easy to memorize this. When you have the exam, you just write 10, 5, 2, 1, put 7 up here, and then 8, 9, 11, 12. Done. But see, the exams are not that easy. They're more like which pathway is going wrong which factor is going wrong or what is going on with the patient why is why are his labs abnormal so to test for that we have pt or prothrombin time this is to test for anything abnormal on the extrinsic pathway which is really just factor seven for this one the reagents on the test contain tissue thromboplastin thromboplastin okay it is also used to monitor warfarin therapy warfarin therapy some books um, call uh, also say coumadin so that's on the PT okay on the extrinsic pathway uh, warfarin therapy messes up your vitamin K dependent factors dependent Dependent ah, factors. What are these? This is, um, you write seven, you have two, then another here, nine, and then ten. If you write it in Roman numerals, it's easier to remember. So you got seven, and then you write another two lines there, and then a third line, and an X, and then double X. Okay? Um, 
so don't worry about nine too much because nine is on the intrinsic pathway for warfarin therapy what it really messes up is the seven two and ten therapeutic range um, that you want your patient to be in if they're under warfarin therapy is uh, having an INR or international normalized ratio which is the INR you want the INR this is a number calculated from the PT okay I'm going to show the formula in a little bit but the INR therapeutic range for warfarin therapy this is actually pretty important uh, this shows up quite often in review books um, it's 2.0 to 3.0 that's the therapeutic range let's put therapeutic range and what is the calculation for the INR this is another important thing so INR equals patient result says patient result over mean of reference range reference range over um, to the power of ISI which is the inter uh, wait hold on international sensitivity index okay so memorize that because that's pretty um, what, what do you call this pretty common question um, uh, you could also say geometric mean sometimes. Geometric mean. So you could say patient result over geometric mean um, to the power of the international. Oh my god, it's hard to remember this. <laughs> international sensitivity index. Okay, so a quick review. We have uh, the PT to identify if it is going wrong, if the extrinsic pathway is going wrong. So we have the PT for that. The reagent contains tissue thromboplastin. It uh, is used to monitor warfarin therapy. Therapeutic range for warfarin therapy is 2 to 3. Um, warfarin therapy messes up your vitamin K dependent factors. This means that these specific factors, 7, 2, 9, and 10, are, you know, they need vitamin K to function. Um, and then we have INR. This is the formula to get the INR, which is patient result over mean of reference range. To the power of international sensitivity index and that's it so and now we move on to the intrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway the test used to identify if there is something wrong with your intrinsic pathway is the activated partial thromboplastin time okay so let's start what is it it um it's a test that has kaolin cellite and elagic acid in its reagents uh, so when these things um, get mixed into your plasma it activate it starts to activate your intrinsic pathway and if it if there's anything wrong within these factors then your APTT time will have a prolonged time to create a clot. And so, what else? It is also used to uh, monitor heparin therapy. And an easier way to memorize the heparin therapy PTT relationship is by writing two T's in shorthand and then you connect the bridge right here. You get an H for heparin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay and then after that we also have lupus anticoagulant so what is lupus anticoagulant so it's like antibodies that attach to phospholipids in your body or plasma and because it competes with your factors these antibodies tend to prolong your PTT time because these have a lot of um, phospholipid lipid involved in this cascade. So if you have a lot of lupus anticoagulant in your body, it tends to prolong your PTT and it, it has nothing to do with your 
factors itself. It's, it has nothing to do with the activation of your factors itself. That means your factors are okay, but since something is blocking it from working, it slows down everything. And so that's lupus anticoagulant. And by saying that um, something is interfering with your cascade, um, that means that when your APTT is prolonged, oh shoot, APTT is prolonged because of this, um, it is not corrected. Not correct, this is important. It's not corrected in mixing studies with normal plasma because your your factors are fine it's just that something is interfering it from working and that's the lymphus anticoagulant so you ad identify the problem when you do mixing studies and the ptt is still prolonged okay and that's it for that and then reference range for ptt is reference range is 20 to 40 seconds Okay, and so we'll do a summary for what we just learned. Um, so, let's do that over here. We have PT. I'm going to do a table here. PT, PTT, extrinsic, intrinsic, and common pathway. Doot, doot, doot. So, if there's a prolonged PT result, so longer than the reference range for this, which is, you know, less than 13 hours, I forgot to write reference range is less than 13 seconds. So, if your PT is prolonged, longer than 13 seconds, but your PTT is normal, you have something wrong in your extrinsic pathway. Now, uh, the opposite is when your PT is normal and your PDT is prolonged, there's something wrong with your intrinsic pathway, okay? But then if both are prolonged, you have a common pathway problem, right? Here, right here's the problem because both of them are affected, both PT and PDT are prolonged. So that's it! That pretty much covers the coagulation cascade. Um, and then I'm going to cover deficiencies on the next video, okay? Thanks for watching and I hope this helps. I'm going to put up a summary on my website if you want to have like this, this note card index card size notes for your, um, for your notes or for your studying, then just head on to my website and I'll, it'll be there. Thank you for watching and I hope this helps. Bye!